Well, new this morning, we're seeing new video of Tiger Woods taking two breathalyzer tests while he's inside the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. The golf legend was arrested for driving under the influence in Jupiter Memorial Day morning. Chris Parento standing by with some startling numbers about drug driving. But we begin with Melanie. Now you've been looking at new video. He's first seen sitting in a chair slumped over. What happens after? Well, I mean, it's really embarrassing, but it does catch everything that happened in those moments. At one point, he asked the deputy to, quote, unlock his bracelets. He is called over for the first breathalyzer test. The deputy explains that she'll need at least two samples. Blow. Blow out. Blow out. Don't suck it. Blow out. Okay. Take a breath in. Now blow out. Blow out. Good. There you go. Keep going. 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 Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Okay, that's good. All right. Just go back and have a seat, and I'll call you back up again for the second one. Thank you. So then they did a second test, and the officer walks him back to his chair, helping him get there. Woods is told that he did pass both tests with no trace of alcohol on his breath. Then the officer asked Tiger to submit to a urine test. He says he'll do it. The golfer also says something about wanting an attorney, but in the audio, it does sound a little slurred. Bruce Nicky, back to you. All right, thank you, Mel. Woods' arrest is shining the light on an alarming trend in America. For the first time in a decade, people involved in deadly car crashes are more likely to have either illegal or prescribed drugs in their systems instead of alcohol. Channel 4's Chris Parento has been looking into the numbers. And Chris, an attorney that you talked with says that, that really shockingly, this is the new normal. He did, Nikki. Uh, Mitch Stone told me that over the last 10 years, he's really seen a rise in people that have been arrested for being behind the wheel on drugs more than on alcohol. But he says that convicting someone of drugged driving is not as cut and dry as drunk driving. It's the video everyone has viewed and voiced their opinion on this week. Golfer Tiger Woods going through field sobriety exercises after deputies found him asleep behind the wheel of his Mercedes in the middle of a roadway at 3 in the morning on Monday. After the DUI arrest, Woods released a statement saying what happened was, quote, an unexpected reaction to prescribed medications, end quote. We've seen drug driving here in Duval County before. In 2010, Sasha Pringle was sentenced to 30 years in prison after being convicted of DUI manslaughter and other charges after her car hit the SUV of Lou McCagey, forcing the mother over the side of the Buckman Bridge. Any type of medication, any type of drug, any, you know, any amount of alcohol is going to have some impact on your, on your body. That's what it's designed to do. According to the Governor's Highway Safety Association, last year, 43% of the time, drivers in fatal crashes had drugs in their system. For alcohol, that number was lower, 37% of drivers. In 2005, alcohol was found in 41% of traffic deaths. At that time, only 28% of drivers had drugs in their system. Attorney Mitch Stone says the drug numbers yeah. don't necessarily tell the full story. Any type of medication, any type of drug is going to remain in your body long after the effects have worn off. So although it'll test positive in your urine or your blood, it's not necessarily creating a problem for you from an impairment standpoint. Stone says much like with alcohol, each person is impacted differently by prescription drugs. But he says for authorities, it's much more difficult right now because there's no number to determine what level of a prescription painkiller causes an, an impairment in a driver, which is different than they have with alcohol. Live this morning, I'm Chris Parento, Channel 4, The Local Station.